Oh, hi. I'm Chris from Air Windows. And as I record this, you might not be seeing me for a while because as of right now, for me, YouTube is down. And I have a plugin to post, so I'm just going to have to be more reliable than, you know, Google and post my plugin anyway. If it's being posted without a video, it's because I was not able to upload this. But I'm still recording it because I have Interstage. Interstage is my new plugin for this week. And it's interesting. I was doing experiments to try to either simulate the circuitry inside a mixing desk or other piece of analog equipment. And I was testing against a implementation of the biquad filters I've been coming up with. And I wanted to see whether I could make the biquad filters sound better than me up to my old tricks doing strange, weird things with IIR filters and slew limiting and so on. Uh, nope, this actually ended up sounding better than anything that I could do with the uh, biquad filters. So we're posting this. If I'm able to do something that uh, has the biquads and sounds just as good, you'll get that too. But this gets the name Interstage because it outperformed everything that I tried otherwise. So what is Interstage? Um, okay, brace yourself. It is a two-level IIR high pass, and the high pass subtracts an average sample, which is limited against uh, not the direct, but the initial stage low pass reference point used for the high pass, except for that the average is also against the slew limited it sounds like this, and I'll also show you some noise sounds and have some comments about what's going on with that. So here we go. This is a kind of bright, shiny sound without interstage on. Oh, and I can turn it up just a bit. And I better go find it again. Here we go. So here are those bright noises. Interstage does this. It has several purposes. One of them is to rein in subsonic bass, but it also handles highs in a rather special way. I'll turn it back off. You'll hear that the extreme lows actually extend farther with it off, but they don't sound like it. And the extreme highs are more digitally. When you turn it back on, and you get more apparent size out of it. Now, this is not a loudinator. Here, let me shut this off for half a moment. This is not a loudinator. This is designed to be one of your really subtle plugins that you can stick in. As you see, it has no controls, so don't expect any sliders. And it's just there to emulate sort of an analog circuitry reacting in a particular kind of way. Uh, you should be able to put multiple copies of it in there if you want. It won't uh, slew limit extra if you do that. So you can put it in various places in the gain staging of a mix if you want. It is not simply an equalizer because of its sensitivity to slew rate. It's acting like uh, analog circuitry with limitations of that kind. So what I'll do now is show you what you get when, let's take it down a little bit. And before I turn on this noise, I've had interesting luck with noise, and it might be getting better with YouTube, although I've also had interesting luck with YouTube in that apparently I can't post this today. Uh, when you see it, you'll see it. I'll post the plugin anyhow. But YouTube is the place where people have copyrighted or content ID'd literal white noise of various colors. And you know, slightly equalized in various ways for the purpose of copyright striking people's normal videos like mine with the use of a test oscillator or some other kind of noise in claims that I'm pirating 
their white noise recording or their filtered white noise recording. This is known as a skim. And there have been recent YouTube uh, changes to apparently stop them being able to do that. And I guess we'll find out if I get to upload this video at all, whether that worked, because this is going to be a noise. And then you will hear interstage affecting it and see it on the uh, Vox Angles band that I've got here. First, let's throw on some noise. Boom. You can see it goes right up to zero here, but Notice how we have a change in tonality. And that change in tonality is because the slew rating, the slew limiting, is stepping on its ability to put forth extreme slew rate. So what we're getting is a signal dependent clamping down on the highs that is not the case at all levels. It's going to round off stuff slightly, but it's behaving, it's, it's taking effect relative to a, a prearranged low pass samples. It, put it this way, this is not channel over again. This is a little complicated. It's got a little more going on. So I would suggest that you can throw it on anything without hurting it, but uh, audition it very audition it against various things, see what you like about it. And I will now show you what it sounds like. First turn it on and then adjusting the level. And you'll hear, turn it on, that if I turn down the level, we have normal brightness at quieter volumes. We can see that on the chart here. But then as we start to push it up, including levels that are actually too loud, and they, if I wasn't turning it down with a uh, bit shift gain, uh, this would be clipping. But you can see that it starts to flatten out. And it'll get darker as you start pushing it harder. Now, what that does to audio, uh, we can put this back to normal volume and start throwing some other stuff on there. And you can hear that you can throw it onto things like drums and cymbals. That's a mid-rangey type sound, but you should be able to steer here some effect. Notably on that hi-hat. And then if I turn it back off again, it should sound more like a digital recording. It's airier, but less plausible, less convincing. And then back on. but it's not really stepping on quieter uh, brightness. And I can throw it on as sort of mix. This is a kind of rock mix. And remember that what you see there is kind of loudinated. It's going to a essentially a full volume. This is not a final clipper or a, a loudinator plugin. So it's possible for its high pass to give you bass peaks that are reshaped and become louder, or to have uh, signals be going over zero. So this is something that you'd put in the middle of the mix somewhere, or on a channel or on a sub mix, rather than something that you put on the end and expect it to final clip for you. That's not what this is about. And I'll show you this sort of rock mix, which has a lot of loud, bright guitars and things. Once the guitars kick in, I'll turn it on. Turn it on.
and you can hear that it's reshaping the lows. And there's a different tonality to the brightness. Turn it off. And doing this, you can hear that the sort of halo of digital brightness around the mix is very much in place with interstage off. But if I turn interstage on, it'll clamp that down and enclose it. It'll bring it more into that sort of analog vibe thing where it's not sort of all glittery and digital and instead feels like it's coming off of analog hardware. And again, without it, with it. Take it off. Back on. So there you have it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to post this video because, like I said, um, I'm not broken, but YouTube is today. And I'm going to post Interstage anyway. So if you get to see this, either YouTube fixed itself real fast or I was finally able to post the video. Given that I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to post this, I might as well cut this short. I will, however, mention that all of this is supported by Patreon. Um, Patreon might not necessarily be any more reliable than YouTube, but I hope it'll be mostly reliable as YouTube. And your helping me out through Patreon is the reason that I'm able to post things even if I don't have YouTube available. I should stop teasing them like that or they'll never let me go back. Anyways, I appreciate the support from people and I hope you like Interstage. I think some people are going to like it a whole bunch and other people won't necessarily get the idea because under some circumstances it is so completely uh, transparent that you won't hear it doing so much. But it is reshaping the lows like the high pass in Interstage filtration between analog gear. And it does also have the high frequency restriction of like transistors and op amps and things like that. And the result should help you get a sound that'll be effective and probably more comfortable to mix with. Because if you've got this in the middle of a bunch of channels, um, they'll be contained in such a way that they'll sit better in the, in the mix, most likely. At any rate, this is the latest in my no sliders, no problem line of plugins. And I hope you like it. I hope you see me talking about it. But even if you don't see me talking about it, I will post it anyway. And I do hope you like it. Talk to you later.